Hey, <laughs> welcome to Dr. Sylvie's injury care. Um, I just had my 269th fight the other night and um, it was cart shook. So that means that you don't wear gloves, you just put rope wraps around your hands. And I tape and wrap my hands with like gauze um, underneath those wraps because you can't just put the wraps directly on your skin. Um, but so there's very, very little protection. It's very hard to get the, the rope part actually to stay over your knuckles. That's part of what the tape is for. Um, but so basically it's more or less bare knuckles and the rope like came uh, kind of right around to there. Um, I fought Kartchuk, I think this was my 14th Kartchuk fight. Um, and I've never really had uh, injuries to my hands or arms or anything like that um, in that process. Uh, I've broken my right hand twice. Uh, the first time I broke it was because the gloves I was wearing, um, which are stadium gloves, stadiums provide the gloves for you. They were, <laughs> they were like oven mitts. They were very, very hinky, very old. Um, and I threw an overhand right incorrectly and uh, broke my hand. So that was the first time I broke my hand. And then uh, the second time I broke it was more recently. I think it was in the last year, uh, maybe at the beginning of this year. And I wasn't wearing gloves at all. It was at the end of training and I'd taken my gloves off and uh, Yotun Pan wanted to show me something that involved him catching my leg and then he like threw me backwards, which he didn't do anything wrong, but I was totally not um, anticipating this or prepared for this. And when I fell backwards, I fell in kind of a weird way and my arm flailed and I actually like hit my knuckles against the rope, um, which is the same thing with like when you dive into water, it's like cement, depending on how high you're diving from. So I basically smacked this rope with my hand and broke the knuckle. Um, so I broke my right hand twice. My left hand, because my uh, punches have actually become way more accurate, which is really, really good. Um, I was landing them against my opponent's skull, <laughs> which I don't think I broke my left hand because I've broken my right hand twice. Um, I know what that feels like, and I, I don't think my left hand is broken. Um, after the fight, I started feeling, during the fight, when I made contact, I could feel that making contact on these front two knuckles, which is where you're supposed to hit them, which is really good. Um, you can see a little bit of discoloration there. Um, I could feel as I was punching, like that's <laughs> giving some like crunchy impact. Um, and then after the fight, like, a few hours after the fight, it started hurting more and it just started having this kind of like radiating pain down this way. And I could feel it wasn't actually the bones. I was pressing on it and it wasn't in the bones. They didn't feel broken. It felt like the soft tissue in there. And when I would um, hit like this, it didn't radiate down this way. It stayed, that pain stayed on the knuckles. So the pressure going this way was not creating more pain there, which is really good. But I was getting some pain along here definitely on the knuckles and then like soft tissue along in here. And it, because of the swelling, it was getting harder to close my hand. So number one, keep opening and closing your hand. <laughs> the first time I broke my right hand uh, in that in that fight, um, we got in the car and drove from Hua Hin up to Chiang Mai, which is like a 15 hour drive. And in this 15 hour drive, I was basically just trying to keep range of motion in my hand the entire time because I was actually driving up to Chiang Mai for another fight. I fought with a broken hand for like six months. Um, so I knew from that experience that you basically just want to like as much as you can keep the range of motion like it's gonna start swelling, it's gonna hurt, your body is doing things to try to protect itself which is really good. That's why uh, your legs get super stiff after like really hard leg kicks is that it's the inflammation is basically trying to create a cast or a splint for the damaged part of your body. Um, that's a good thing, but for my purposes, I don't want a frozen hand. So I'm basically trying to let that swelling happen, but like maintain as much of range of motion as it's possible because I don't want a <laughs> frozen claw hand. Uh, so when we got back, um, we flew instead of driving, which was nice. So I was not uh, doing this for, you know, 15 hours coming back from uh, my last fight. Um, I got straight away to doing hot water soaks. Uh, you can go see my videos on YouTube that are about taking care of your shins. Your shins get really dinged up because um, you don't wear shin pads in fights. And taking care of the, the we call them a mouse, but like a, a lump um, or a knot on your shin that happens after fights, you really want to drain that out and you want to use hot water massage to get rid of those. Um, so I'm doing a version of that for my hand, which is going to be a hot water soak, and then you massage it afterwards. Um, it's not the same as the simultaneous hot water and uh, draining out that you do um, for knots on your shins with like a towel. 
uh, go watch those videos, it's a different thing. But hot water is a huge, huge thing in caring for yourself um, when you get injuries and fights. So um, I have here, it's like a little cooking show. I'm so excited, <laughs> I love cooking show. So I have here, uh, this is Epsom salt. Um, you can actually just use regular salt if you don't have Epsom salt. Epsom salt is better because it has more magnesium and you want the magnesium to help with your um, swelling and things like that. It's, if you can get Epsom salt, it's really, really good. It's a little hard to find it in Thailand. If you're in Thailand and you wanna find Epsom salt, it's not called Epsom salt here. It's actually called Farang salt. So if you say Glua uh, Farang, that means Epsom salt. But so you get this and I have, I don't know, I'd say maybe like a quarter cup or something. That's a lot. That's like how much you would put if you were gonna put like a big tub of water. I actually want a lot because um, my hands are pretty jacked. <laughs> so um, I'm using I'm using this much and I'm gonna um, use my sink in the bathroom. I'm just gonna turn this on, so sorry for the sound. But I'm just doing that because I'm trying to get the water hot. The water has to be hot enough that you're uh, soaking the hand in hot water, but obviously not hot enough to burn yourself. Like, if you can't keep your uh, body part in the water, it's useless. So it can't be so hot that you can't keep your body part in the actual soak. Um, but you want it to be really warm. You want it to be pretty hot. So what I do is I'm mixing this as I'm filling it. Sorry, I can't show you guys because it's below eye level and I don't want to mess with the camera. But um, fill it to about there just because I'm just sticking my hand in it and then I'm just kind of swirling it around because I'm trying to dissolve the salt as much as possible. So what I'm doing here is basically you can just kind of like play with your phone with your other hand or like watch a show or whatever the thing is. Um, but basically I'm just going to uh, stick my hand in there as best I can. Let me see if I can even show this. So I'm just going to stick because it's my knuckles, it's not actually gonna go all the way to my wrist, which my wrist hurts a little bit too, but I'm not as worried about that. I'll hit that with the massage, but I'm not as worried about making sure that I get that in the warm soak, just because it's, um, what would you call it? It's like, it's not residual, but it's kind of like peripheral to, to where the actual injury took place. I didn't actually jam my wrist, I jammed my knuckles, and then the wrist is hurting just because of the swelling. So, what I would do is I would sit in this hot water bath for 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And I don't actually massage it while it's sitting in there. Um, I was telling Kevin about this last night. I'm not a doctor. I don't actually have like a scientific reason for that. That's just how I like to do it. I don't like massa massaging my hand in the actual water. Um, so I'll leave that for like 10 to 15 minutes. The water gets cooler in that amount of time. So I have to add hot water. Like um, we have a we have like a water dispenser that you get in like offices. So it has the hot water already on the on the side of it. So it's dispensed near boiling, but not boiling. That's the temperature that you want. Um, and I put in literally a cup, so like eight ounces about to the size of the bowl that you see here, and it, it brings the temperature back up really quick to the point where it's actually a little hard um, to keep my hand. In there so you you want to find that adjustment of like not making it so hot that you have to take your hand out that kind of thing so um, in a 10-15 minute soak you'll probably just have to add hot water once you know you can feel whether the temperature of the water is getting really high um, I'm sorry getting really low and you need to put it in or not so because I'm making a video I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make you sit for 10-15 minutes and I'm not gonna do the baking show thing where you take a fully baked pie out of the oven. I'll show you how this works. So here's my hand. You can see a little bit of the discoloration here, but even in that like, I don't know, two minutes that I had it in there, there's already, I can feel um, the bones a little bit better. It's already taken a little bit of the swelling down. So what I'm going to do is that when it's time to massage it, dry that off a little bit. I have a couple of things that I use. So um, I'm from Boulder, so we have we have a degree of belief in like um, you know holistic type medicines kind of thing, and I think that's real. So um, this is arnica. Um, I have to order this. Um, I haven't found this in Thailand, but it's not expensive to order. I just find things on like Lazada or iHerb or whatever the thing is. 
So Arnica is actually really good for bruises and swelling, like kind of smaller injury type stuff. My uh, family calls it moose snot. That's what I called it growing up because it looks a little bit like that. It doesn't have the most awesome smell, but it doesn't actually smell bad. It just smells a little bit medicinal. So I take a little bit of this balm and use that as the um, lubricant, I don't know, for the massage. The other thing, I don't know if you can get this over the counter everywhere in the world. You can get it over the counter in um, Thailand, which is really good. It's called Voltaren. Uh, this one's double strength. It's basically ibuprofen in a gel form. So this is really good for swelling. This is really good to put on your shins after you've done your hot water massage to kind of keep that um, swelling down kind of thing. Um, so up to you whether you want to do kind of the like Arnica vibe or if you want to do um, actual medicated thing. I'm going to use this for maybe the next couple of days and then I'll switch over to the Arnica. But I'm just going to put a little bit on here and I'm going to put this everywhere that it hurts on the hand. So this will go down to my wrist, but basically I'm just going to use this to, I'm rubbing it in because it's a medicine, but I'm also going to be doing the massage. You can actually see the discoloration here and how it moves around. So I'm using that to do my massage. And the important part when you're doing this is that you want it to kind of um, move in one direction. It's the same thing if you watch my videos about how to take care of bumps and stuff on your uh, shin is that I've gotten massages many times in Thailand and I've noted that there's not a whole lot of like, there is like in an oil massage back and forth, but when they find a problem, they always go in one direction. So um, I've had people comment on my shin video that you should always rub up. Um, this comes from the same kind of things. People are like, you move towards your heart when you're like doing body scrubs or something. I don't know if, if that's what you like do that. I go down because it's gravity. <laughs> so when I'm trying to get rid of, you know, draining um, a knot in my shin or something, I'm gonna be standing up most of the time. So I tend to push down because gravity is that way. So I, I don't rub like this. I try to get uh, going in one direction and I try to locate like right here, that hurts a lot. So I try to locate where, where there's a spot that's painful and um, work on that. I was recently talking to a guy who um, is training with Sit Thailand. <laughs> That's the gym. He's training with Crew Thailand at Sit Thailand in Chiang Mai, and he had a really nasty um, shin knot. And he had watched my videos, and he was working on it, which was really good. Like he knew the process to do it. But here's the thing about self massage: it's kind of like tickling yourself or something. It's very hard to do self massage, and if you have pain, like this pain's very moderate, um, and I'm also <laughs> good at hurting myself but um you kind of take it easy on yourself a little bit it's a little bit hard to press out knots when they're really painful because you will back off from how much that hurts and so you don't get as aggressive on it as you kind of need to necessarily do so you might need to find someone to help you <laughs> my oldest brother Gabe was a um, skateboarder and he fell off his longboard and just <laughs> His knee got so messed up. It was really gross. And he went and he sat in the tub and he, he called me in to like uh, wash his knee for him. Um, which I love playing nurse. I'm like totally this evil nurse that loves to go in and like do gross medical stuff and kind of hurt people slightly, whatever. Um, so he called me in to help clean his knee because he knew that he would not uh, get in there uh, doing it to himself as he would letting me do it. So um, I was a wonderful time in my life that I got to go clean out my brother's knee, but it's the same type of thing. So if, you, if you're trying to push on this and you can't really do it because it hurts, um, get someone to help you and you know let them know when it's too much to the point where you literally can't take it. Otherwise, just wear a mouthpiece and you know handle it for 10 minutes and then you'll heal much faster. But so I'm trying to, trying to get in there and kind of move that down and then I'll do you know some massage on my wrist here and again, as this, is, uh, as this is recovering from the hot water soak, it's gonna feel really good from the hot water, so it'll be like really nice and loose for about 20 minutes, and then it starts to swell back up a little bit, which is just natural, that's fine. Um, but while that's happening, you wanna keep your like range of motion and, and make sure that you're not um, stiffening up too much as all of that swelling is coming back in. And I do this like three times a day, maybe, 
Um, and it's actually significantly improved. Um, so I've been doing this since yesterday. We got back yesterday and already like yesterday I was like, Ugh, hand may be broken. Today I'm like definitely not broken. So I'm gonna keep doing this, which is really good. Um, I brought some Epsom salt and some Voltaren over to Nong Bai, who uh, used to train at my gym and now she's over at Rambaz gym. Um, and she has a title fight coming up, which is really exciting. Um, and she hurt her foot, like her foot's really messed up. So I brought her basically the same process. You can do this on any part of your body that you're having. Um, well, it's hard to soak your neck or something, but maybe you can put it down. Um, but you can do this on basically any part of your body that's um, having some stiffness, swelling type of situation. I didn't do this when I broke my right hand twice and I really wish that I had. Um, I, I used it for my foot and things like that. So this is, this is Sylvie's vlog on <laughs> how to deal with hopefully not broken, probably not broken uh, hand injuries. Um, so I'm gonna go soak this for real because I was doing it in the kind of like cooking show way <laughs> for the demonstration to show you guys. So I'm gonna go do this a little bit more for real and thank you guys for watching. Hopefully stay injury free, but if you do have any kind of injury like this, even if it's small, even if it's like your finger rather than your whole hand, your elbow, people get like kind of up in here, they'll get like some uh, joint issues. You can totally stick an elbow or a foot or whatever in a Epsom salt bath and then do some uh, massage right on the end of that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of ice. I use ice very, very occasionally if there's like a, a huge thing of swelling that I need to kind of bring down in that moment, but I tend to use a lot of hot water. Um, if you've just injured something like 10 minutes ago, don't stick it in hot water straight away, but like that night or the next morning or something like that, you can totally start with hot water and it's not a big deal. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, take care of yourselves. Talk to you guys later.